as I've been mentioning earlier, STRC performs vectorized operations and just like with numerical vectors, same thing happens with string vectors. So for example, if you said STRC and you give it two vectors of strings, then it's going to operate on each element of, of the vector. So for example, here it's going to first combine A with X, B, and then B with Y, and then C with Z. The result is going to be A, X, B, Y, C, C, three strings, right? Uh, so that's what it's going to do. So of course, the result is going to be uh, just the result of the individual vectors, uh, individual strings that were combined. So the result is three separate strings, right? It's not a vector. The result is just three individual strings given as out. We can use the function str sub for finding substrings, which is portions of strings. So for example, suppose you want only the first five characters, or you want the characters uh, six to fifth, uh, six to tenth character, and so on. Those are called substrings within strings. So for example, suppose we have this uh, vector of strings, apple, banana, pear, and we want to find the first three characters of each of them. It's a string sub x 1 comma 3, where x is this whole vector. So as we already know, uh, it's going to take each element and operate on it separately. So it's going to do string sub x 1 comma 3. It's going to give the first three characters of each of them, and that's going to be the first three characters, a, p, p, b, a, and p, a. Notice, of course, that the case is maintained. Uh, so the uppercase a comes out as uppercase a, and so on. Uh, now, of course, you can use negative integers. We'll rarely do this, but then it counts from there. So here we are saying, uh, do this substitution, but get me from the third character uh, from the end to the first character from the end, which is the last three characters. And that's what you'll get. So, and of course, if you try this, you'll get the empty string because you're saying here, start from the last character so the, the starting character must be less than the ending character. In this case, the starting character is actually more than the ending character because the starting character is the last character and the ending character is something that's before that. So obviously, uh, it's not going to work, right? So the from character uh, is what comes first and uh, means from where till where. And from has to be less than till. In this example, from is actually greater than till. So you're going to get back the empty string. Okay, so it's going to give the empty string for each of them. That is just as expected. Uh, and of course, if you if your uh, starting character is there and if your ending character is beyond the end of the string, then it just ignores it and gives you as many as it can. Right. So suppose we had said string sub app app one comma five, then it would have just given us app because there are no five characters. Uh, the string doesn't even have five characters. So that's how it's going to work. Okay. Now, you can use, uh, again, uh, you can do x11, get us the first character. So here what we are doing is we are replacing the first character with something else. So we are saying string sub x1, one, one, right? That is replace the first character by the lowercase of the first character, right? So we are taking the first character, converting it to lowercase with the function string to lower. So what is, what's going to happen at the end of this, of course, is you're going to get apple, banana, pear with lowercase a, b, and p. Okay, so that's how string sub works. Let's look at some more functions. Uh, we'll shortly be looking at this function string sort for sorting strings. But before that, let's look at some other functions. So for example, here we're saying uh, string to uppercase, and then we are passing it two strings. The first is the letter i, the string consisting of the letter i, and the second is a string consisting of something that looks like the letter I. It's actually not an English character. It's a character in, uh, I think it's a character in Turkish, right? Nevertheless, uh, it converts it into the lowercase, uh, into the corresponding uppercase character. Uh, so that's the string to upper. We, earlier we had seen the example of string to lower. This is string to upper, right? Now, uh, the way the string to upper and many of the string functions work is that they have this argument called locale, right? Because after all, these string operations we are performing can be performed on characters that belong to any language. Because after all, initially, computer programming began with just the English characters, uh, characters or alphabets of the, uh, of the English language. But subsequently, uh, it has expanded and been enlarged to, to cover all of the world's languages. 
right? at least all of the major world languages. So several hundred world languages are all covered uh, in this, right? So which means that many of these operations have to be performed uh, on all of those, right? And specifically, uh, when you have many languages that use the same script, but in different ways, right? So for example, our English alphabet is used in so many other languages, right? Many languages uh, either originally had the same script as English, or many other languages have adopted English script. So for example, if you look at the language Turkish, Turkish was originally written uh, in some other way. I think it was written like Arabic, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but it had a different script. And uh, during the Turkish revolution, they converted it and they started using the English script to represent Turkish. So in these cases, whenever you're performing these kinds of operations, string operations, they have to be cognizant of what is the actual language because the rules may differ from language to language. Right? So if you want to indicate the language specifically, then you can tell it locale, right? And then you have a two two character indication of what the locale is. Of course, here uh, this is uh, TR stands for Turkish. So if you did this in Turkish, uh, the uppercase of I looks like this, and the uppercase of this I looks like this, right? So they have two different uh, two different eyes, I guess, for for whatever reason. That's their language, okay? Or if you take another example here, let's say we take the string apple, eggplant, banana and then we sort it and say string sort x locale equals English which is the default right so we don't really need to say locale equals English because if you don't say it that's the default it will take so if you sorted it it's going to obviously sort it as apple banana eggplant for the normal uh, order of uh, alphabets that we have a b c d e etc but if you took the same vector and you sorted it with a different locale in this case locale is uh, Hawaii, H-A-W, right? then the sorting would work completely differently. Right? So it's going to sort it as apple, eggplant, banana. Right? That's just the rules of the Hawaiian language. Okay? So because of the fact that string processing may uh, require us to process strings in many different languages and the rules of the different languages could be different, uh, you can customize it by using this locale argument. Uh, just to quickly review some important topics, go through the code and make sure that you understand the difference between SEP and collapse. Now, when you uh, use strc to combine strings, right? that is, you, you call the str underscore c function and you provide it uh, two or more strings, then it's going to combine them together and make it into one, make them into one string. And at that point, you can provide a sep argument to indicate what the separator character should be. Right? By default, the separator character is null, which means nothing is going to come in between, everything is going to get jammed together. Right? So, that's, so the sep argument applies when you're providing many strings as arguments to the, uh, to the str underscore c function. The collapse argument applies when you're giving the strc function a vector of strings and you want to jam all of those elements of the vector together, then you use the collapse argument, right? So the sep and collapse, they are kind of same, but also quite different in terms of how they work, right? So make sure you go through that and uh, understand it carefully, okay? So suppose you want to find the middle character of a string, right? So given a string, could be of any length we don't know what the length of string the length of the string could be 1 it could be 10 it could be 15 uh, and so on right so it could be an odd number it could be an even number right and uh, to find the middle character of course we need to use string sub to find a substring but in order to know which is the middle character we also have to know the length of the string so that we can compute the middle character right so for example take take this string a b c d e f g Okay, so that's a string that has seven characters, right? If it has seven characters, then we know that the middle character is the fourth character, right? Three, three, six, and the one in the middle is the uh, middle character, the fourth character. So we can easily find that out. But unfortunately, what happens is if the length of the string is even, right? So for example, if you have the string at AT, then what is the middle character? There is no middle character. Right? So it depends upon, uh, in that case, what do we want to do? Suppose we agree that if the, uh, if the string is 
got an even number of characters, then we want the result to be the null string because there is no middle character. And if it's got an odd number of characters, then we know what the middle character is. Okay, so let's take that example first. Okay, so I'm saying first, let's find the length of the string str underscore length and store it in the variable len. Okay, so x is whatever string that we have. Len is str underscore length of x, so the length of the string. And then we are saying if else len percent percent 2 equals 0. Now recall from our earlier discussion that percent percent tells you the remainder on dividing one by the other. So in this case we divide length by 2, integer division, and if the remainder is 0, right, that means 2 completely divided it. It's a number that is divisible by 2. Right? If that is the case, then we know that it's an even number. Right? So if len percent percent 2 is 0, the, remember we are using the double equals to compare this. If this is true, then the length of the string is even and therefore we say, okay, the result is going to be the empty string. Right? If else, if you recall, works as if else, then you say condition and then the result, if the condition is true, and result if the condition is false okay so if the condition is true in other words the string is of even length then the result is the empty string if the condition is false that means the string was of odd length right so in that case we want to say substitute I mean get us the substring starting from uh, len percent slash percent by 2 plus 1 right so let's say the length of the string is 7 you do an integer division, percent slash percent does an integer division. So if you do an integer division of 7 by 2, the result you get is 3. Okay, it's an integer division. The actual result, of course, we know is 3.5, but integer division will discard the 0.5 and you get 3, and then you add 1 to it. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, so I'm saying get me the substring starting at the fourth character, ending at the fourth character, which means give me just the fourth character right start at four end at four so it's going to give you only one character so if you did this then you will get the middle character of the string okay so that's what it works now suppose we interpreted the question slightly differently and said if it's of odd length give me the actual middle character if it's of even length give me the two middle characters right in other words in this example it would be the third and the fourth character right suppose we interpreted it that way then we can again say this. If it's even, then give me str sub, that is a substring starting from the len integer division 2, which in this example would be 3, and the next character, which is 4. That is len integer division 2 plus 1. Okay? And otherwise, if it's odd, then it's still the same as before. Okay? So you can use these functions, combine them to do certain intelligent uh, processing of strings. So I'm just ex uh, showing in this example how uh, typically when you're processing strings you'll use many functions in order to achieve your goal. You won't just employ one single function but you'll use many different functions.